Okay, this is going to be part 10 of the video series on improper integrals. But again, on this part of the series, we're looking at uh, integrals with infinite discontinuities. Now, in the part 9 video, we looked at a case 2 problem where you had an asymptote on the left-hand side of the interval. Now what we'll look at is a case 1 problem where you have an asymptote on the right-hand side. Now, if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch the Part 8 and Part 9 videos that explains where all <clears throat> this stuff on this page came from. But uh, the process basically is going to be <clears throat> just what we've done before. First of all, kind of a two-step process. Now, you want the integral from A to B, but you've got an infinite discontinuity. So what you have to do is come into the middle and pick some point C, and first of all, evaluate the definite integral from A to C, this black part here in the middle, which will give you this area in here. Then step two is to do this. Then find the limit as C approaches B from the left. So what you do is take point C, let it slide to the right, you'll let C get closer and closer to B, and it'll pick up this additional area, and you'll have the solution to the problem. So that'll be our process, but again, this is a, a case one problem where the asymptote is on the right-hand side. So let's see what the problem looks like. Okay, now it looks like this. You've got the integral from 0 to 4 of 1 over the square root of 4 minus x. And if you were to graph it, the graph actually looks like this. So now, um, what you want is the integral from 0 to 4, which you've got a problem in that as x, if x ever gets to 4, you'd have 4 minus 4, you'd have division by 0. So you'll have an asymptote here, and the graph as it approaches that asymptote will take off up this way toward a positive infinity. So you can't find the integral all the way to infinity. So again, you're going to have to follow the process that we've used before. OK, so we'll come in and first of all, put a, just pick some point here in the middle. And we'll find the definite integral from 0 to c, which will give us this area right in here. So again, this is a two-step process. So just to review the rules, we'll do this black part in here. First of all, find the integral from, in our case, 0 to c, the definite integral there. Now this one's going to require u substitution, so it'll take a little bit more work. So again, this will be step one. So step one, I think we'll work in black again, just so it stays consistent. So this is going to be the integral. Now rather than going from 0 all the way to 4, we're just going to do the definite integral from 0 to c, just like we've done on previous problems. So from 0 to c of 1 over, and I think I'll write this as 4 minus x quantity to the 1 half power. So we use fractional exponents. Change it into that, dx. Now again, this is going to be a u substitution problem because you've got something more complicated than just a simple x here. So on this problem, what we'll do is let u be equal to 4 minus x and we'll try using u substitution to get rid of this dx right here. So at this point, just purely a u substitution problem. So first of all, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to let u be equal to um, 4 minus x. Then find the derivative. So the derivative of u with respect to x would be equal to negative 1. And what that gets you to is uh, du would be equal to negative dx but you just want a dx, take the negative, move it over to this other side, and you get negative du is equal to dx. Now this dx matches up with this, so there's your u substitution right here. So that's just plain old u substitution like you've done in uh, previous work. So we'll kind of isolate this in its own little thing here. So this was the u substitution. Now, in addition to use substitution, we're also going to have to change the limits to this thing. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and change the limits, and we'll do that right here. So right now, this is from x equals 0 to x equals c, and we want to change it from u equals something to u equals something. So it looks like this. When um, x is equal to c, then u would be equal to, and go ahead and plug a c in right here. So u would be equal to 4 minus c. And when x is equal to 0, then u would be equal to 4 minus 0. 
which would be 4. So here are your new limits, uh, a lower limit and upper limit. So now we'll go ahead and put that right in over here. So we'll change it from an x problem into a u problem. So this becomes the integral. Now, in terms of u, it will go from 4 to 4 minus c of 1 over, and this becomes u uh, to the 1 half. And then in place of dx, you're going to put a minus du. So that's what the u substitution looks like so far. So now it's just a matter of running through that u substitution problem. So first of all, let's go ahead and take the negative out in front. So this will become the negative of the integral from 4 to 4 minus c. And we'll take this u and move it up to the top and make it be a u to the negative 1 half du. Okay, so that'll turn into a negative. <clears throat> now, when you find the antiderivative of that, it will become u to the 1 half divided by 1 half uh, evaluated from 4 to 4 minus c. And we'll take the 1 half, turn it upside down, bring it out in front, so that'll be a negative 2. Of, um, and we'll just go ahead and make this be the square root of u evaluated from 4 to 4 minus c. Okay, so that's going to be a negative 2 times, at this point, just go ahead and plug in the top number and plug in the bottom number. So this will become the square root, you have in place of u, put 4 minus c, then you've got minus, now plug in the bottom number. So this will be the square root of 4. Now, we can simplify that a little bit, so this would be negative 2, um, and you've got the square root of 4 minus c minus, and the square root of 4 would be 2, so we'll go ahead and simplify that. And I think the last thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and just distribute this negative 2. So this will become negative 2 times the square root of 4 minus c and then the two negatives make a positive, so this will turn into a plus 4 over here. Okay, so what this gives you, in general form, this expression right here is going to give you um, this blue area right here. So this is the definite integral from 0 to c, and it turns out in general form to be this thing right here. So that's step 1. So now looking at the rules again, you've got the black part here done. You've got the definite integral. So now all you do is take the limit as c approaches b from the left. So take c, let it approach 4 from the left, and let's see what we get then. So this, this will be part 2 of the problem. So we move down, and again, that's part 1. So in part 2, and all we're doing here, we'll look at the graph one more time. We're going to take c and allow c to approach 4 from the left. So c is going to get closer and closer to 4, which will pick up this additional area over here and give you the solution to the problem. So let's drop down and do that. So you want to take the limit as c approaches 4 from the left of this definite integral right here. So minus 2 times the square root of 4 minus c plus 4. Okay, now what happens in this case is this. As c gets closer and closer to 4, then this is going to become 4 minus 4. This entire term right here will go to 0. And the only thing that's going to be left over is that 4 right there, and it'll be 4. And what that is, that's the area under that curve. So that's going to be the solution to the problem. Now again, the limit's settled on a fixed number. So just like in the other videos, remember that means that it's convergent. So the area under this curve from 0 to 4, this total area right in here, um, would be 4. So that's an example, again, we'll go back to the very beginning here, of a, of a case 1 problem. So, again, the asymptote was on the right-hand side. We follow the same steps, but this time, uh, 
you pick a, a number C, and then you let C slide toward B, which gives you the interim. But again, a two-step process. The first step is find the definite integral from A to C. Then the second step, take the limit of that answer um, as C approaches the asymptote, and uh, you'll have the solution. So uh, there's an example of, and again, we'll go back here, of a case one problem with the asymptote on the left. So now in part nine, we did the asymptote on the left. On this video, we did the asymptote on the right. Now in the next video, we'll do an asymptote in the middle and take a look at that.